Well, hi, everybody. Um, welcome to the, I guess it's a Thursday demo, but it's our weekly demo that Val decided we should start doing. And so she said, okay, mom, <laughs> you can do four, four patch pin cushions. And we, Tony Phillips has, happens to be here today. And I learned to do it from Tony. I saw one of hers and Rice Shulman started making them. Um, so it's just a fun little project and the finished um, uh, pin cushion is four by four. So you have two and a half inch squares and you need four of them. And when I'm into kind of mass production, what I will do when I have scraps, I will just cut two and a half inch strip or two and a half inch pieces and just keep them all in one place. And I find then if, let's say, I have a friend in the hospital or something, I want to take her a surprise, I could um, just get in that bag and find four squares and, and whip up a pincushion. And then I uh, keep walnut shells at home, uh, just so I make sure I always have them. I like the walnut shells for a couple reasons. Um, they sharpen your needles and your pins as you put them in and out. You can almost feel the abrasion, um, but also it weights them down a little bit. These are almost like little weights. And in some sewing projects, instead of pinning, people <laughs> will use little weights. And I figure, well, you could have cute pin cushions too. Mm -hmm. so. And I found I could get four out of this size. So, and we get these at the pet store. So, you know, you can go buy your own too if you're really gonna get into production mode. Um, we put together um, some packets. Um, these are pencil packs, they're um, quarter inch yards, but we roll them up. And I just love how they look. Um, and so we picked a St. Patrick's Day theme. And uh, so I had, Jackie just cut me one strip of each and I just cut some up and started playing. So what you do once you have your uh, squares cut to two and a half inches, you start arranging. And uh, you can see I've kind of got one right here. Um, and this is so light, you know, I kind of put it opposite the darkest one, but obviously if you want it next to it, you can have it next to it. But then I thought these two were kind of too alike. So that's when I start fussing and playing around with stuff. And if I didn't like this, maybe I'd substitute this guy. So you can kind of play around with these ideas. When everything is said and done, I don't think anybody's gonna say, oh, she put this here, this here, <laughs> whatever, so. So the next thing that I do is to pair them up. So I flip over the color. So now I'm looking at wrong sides. And this is what is going to go through the sewing machine, quarter inch seam allowance. So I put this one in and then I thread this one right after it. And I end up with these little things. And then I'm going to press these so that one goes in one direction and one goes in the other direction. And if you do that, then when you sew this together, you will have a really nice uh, join where the seam allowances come together because they nest, they push against each other. And I find I don't really even need to pin that because it wants to happen when you have one seam allowance going left and one of them going right. Now I'm gonna feed this through the sewing machine and Now I've got my four pieces and I press. And I like to press after each seam. I, I think it just comes from doing years and years of sewing and uh, used to be people would fuss about pressing. I think it's just part of the deal. <laughs> and I use a steam iron because I like to get things nice and flat. 
So now I have my four patches together and I put them on a background fabric and I'm going to stitch around this and leave an opening that's about an inch and a half. And that isn't very much, but it's really all you need when everything is stitched around, you know, it's this big and it just needs to be large enough to turn this to the right side and then to stick my funnel in to put in my, my walnut shells. So at this point, um, and I forgot to bring my point turner, so we'll just do it the old way with my finger here. Probably just as good. <laughs> I don't need a point turner. <laughs> now, when I, before I turned these, I did uh, trim off the little corners because then you won't have as much bulk in the corners. I do need, though I should have had a, Either a chopstick or a pencil. A pencil or something. I'm kind of getting my finger in there, so. I have this, you can just use the pen here. Oh, if you want. wow, Tony, thank you. Good thing you showed up. <laughs> <laughs> and you notice that we aren't using the ink next to the fabric. There is the little uh, cover that goes on the end. And you just kind of push it out a little bit. And I always back tack when I uh, start and stop when I'm stitching around. If you don't back tack, there's this chance that when I stuck my finger in here, I can start ripping it apart. And it's come apart a little bit here, but it's going to be just fine when I sew it. Now, I'm gonna go press again, because I like to get these guys pressed in the seam, seam allowance. And it will look like this. And here's my little opening, but it's nice and flat. Now, um, I had a bad experience with um, spilling walnut shells <laughs> right beside my sewing machine and the throat plate. And I thought, oh, gee. So I now have a system. I actually have a, a larger clear plastic bag that I leave these in. And so I do my filling right in the plastic bag. So I'm dipping out of the plastic bag pouring them in, everything's in the plastic bag. So save a plastic bag or a little tub or something. So I've got my funnel, and this is just a funnel I got, you know, at the hardware store. And I have a little cup, and I find that um, I don't want to fill this too full, because then, you know, if you get it too full, it takes a while to shake it down. And I'm gonna have to get enough in here So once I get to this stage and there's a little bit here, all poofy, I start pushing like this to the corners because I want these to fill really well. Here, why don't you pass this one around? And you know this point of the funnel, uh, is like a tool. I'm doing this with it inside, kind of pushing to each side because I want to keep adding more. Now, this is how much I have left. There's about a half inch up here, and I'm gonna hold the opening closed, and I'm gonna push now out here. And you know, fabric is pliable, so I know this fabric is stretching a little bit. So I'm just pushing down, and I'm seeing if I can get a little more in here. And this is kind of touchy about, okay, how much should I get in here? and I'm kind of pushing to the corners. And I am really close. 
So what I'm gonna do now is set this aside and show you what I do next. So I can pinch the corners a little bit, but I know once I have to sew this shut, this will push up into the corners. So I'm gonna set it in here so they don't all spill. And I have taken and um, put a pin across where I'm going to sew. And I have a single thread and a knot in it. Yep, there's my knot. And I do a whip stitch, which means I'm gonna come through first from the inside. And I wanna make sure my thread, the tail of it is inside. So remember that your needle is a tool. So you can push that down a little bit. And then I take a stitch through both of them and I just take little stitches. And this is a whip stitch because what I'm gonna do is whip it over the top of the seam allowance each time as I take a stitch. And I would say they're an eighth inch apart at the most. So they're pretty close because you don't want any of those walnut shells sneaking out later. And I will get a whole bunch of these at this stage and then just do them at night if I don't feel like sewing at the machine or have something I wanna listen to on TV. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> My husband always says, you aren't even watching. I said, but I'm listening. Like the old days, you listen to radio. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I move the pin over a little bit so that I can um, continue to stitch. So I'm not gonna go ahead and finish that, but maybe you can get up here close, Trish, and I don't know if they can see this, but you know, see how the thread's coming over the top? Then I take another stitch. There we go. And when I get to the end, I will tie a knot and then tie it again. And then I put my needle in the pin cushion and pull it out a couple inches away so the tail of the thread gets hidden inside the pin cushion. I always like things to look tidy when I'm all done. Now, um, one of the things I like to do is to um, put a button in the middle or a um, these little pom-poms. We had some left over from Christmas, so that's what I'm putting in. But I will hold in the middle here and make sure that my walnut shells are to the corners. And it's amazing how they really fill up those corners. And what I do this time though, I need a different needle. I need my embroidery needle and it needs to be a little bit longer because I'm gonna come up from the back or I can start at the front. I think I'll start at the front because I can see better. Now, I'm, my finger's under here, so I move it as soon as I, nope, I'm coming through. There we go. What kind of thread are you using? Just sewing thread, but you know, I. There's all the different weights of sewing thread. I use the heavier. Yes. Strong. And you know what I used to use all the time was Coates and Clark quilting thread because it's waxed. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a little stronger, but I can't even find that anymore in stores. And I haven't asked Annette to look for it, but okay. Now I'm gonna come up. So I started at the front. And there, see that little poof you can see, like a mm -hmm. pillow? And it's kind of a poof in the center. And I take and do a quick little knot. Then I'm going to put my needle through this ball and set it on here. And I want to come up about the same place on the back. And sometimes you think, oh my goodness, I'm over really far, which you might want to re-put your needle in. 
and I just secure after each time I pull it through. I don't know if that's absolutely necessary. It's just me being cautious. Now I got a little mess going here. There we go. <laughs> so I'm gonna go through it again. So I like to make sure it's really there for the long haul. And you know, I could have used green thread. I'm just thinking now, since this is for St. Patrick's Day, mm -hmm. that would have looked cute. And um, actually I should have brought, I was cleaning out my sewing room and I found a little stash of pin cushions. <laughs> and I had um, used a button in the center and instead of going back and forth this way, I went around um, and then around and came back to the center when I did the buttonhole. So this is, my knot's pretty good there, so I'm gonna come to the right side, then I will cut it off. So I'll just pull this nice, nice and tight and cut it off. So it'll be all done. So cute. I mean, it's yeah. just the greatest of It is fun. <laughs> so I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, you. in Thank fact, you. I thought I will just give each one of you a little pin cushion. Oh. oh my goodness. Yeah, and then I'll stuff the rest of these for Jackie. So. Oh my goodness, thank you. Thank you. Beautiful. Yeah, it's very inspiring. Thank you. That was unexpected. Thank you. Oh, so happy St. Patrick's Day. Thank you. It's lovely. It's the look of the Irish in the show. That's right. <laughs> right place right. right. Oh, this just made my day. Thank yeah, you. Okay. Thank you. Well, the snowy day, you. and I yes. had. It's beautiful. Hi, I don't even know if anybody else want to come in all this snow. So, thank you for coming. <laughs>